back everyone. Uh, intercultural communication is a discipline that studies communication across different cultures and social groups or how culture affects communication. Now intercultural communication is defined as uh, situated communication between individuals or even uh, groups of different linguistic or cultural uh, origins and this is uh, derived from the following fundamental definitions. Communication is the active relationship um, uh, that is uh, between people through language and intercultural means and this communicative relationship is between people of different cultures where culture is structured uh, manifestation of human behavior and social life within of course specific national and local uh, contexts, whether political linguistic economic institutional or even professional in order to understand more what is intercultural communication we are joined by dr iman expert lecturer and practitioner of intercultural communication uh, welcome, Dr. Iman. Thank you very much for Hello. coming to Cairo Local Time. Thank you for the nice introduction. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Dr. Iman, I attempted to make a, a, an explanation to the audience. What is uh, intercultural communication? Would you like to add anything? Yes, um, we can make it simple. Hmm. So uh, intercultural communication, we are speaking about culture, enter and communication. Mm -hmm. What's culture? According to uh, Milton Bennett, one of the intercultural communication pioneers, uh, culture is the, the shared and learned behaviors, beliefs, and habits between groups or between people, interacting people in group. Mm -hmm. So these shared and learned um, behaviors and beliefs, um, how would this be when two different groups from different backgrounds come together in the same place? This is enter. Mm. And communication, communication, there's um, verbal communication and non-verbal communication. In intercultural communication, we are speak, speaking mostly about the non-verbal intercultural communication because we believe that speaking, for example, a language, doesn't make a person communicate with this mm. language. Communicate something else. It's not it's only speaking. You deliver your how you deliver your message or, yes. and how you achieve your goal. Okay. So this is intercultural communication. Intercultural communication give us the way to uh, to act, to manage the problems and the misunderstandings that um, appears when different groups are working, for example, together, okay. or are uh, in the same place or in the same family. Um, this is this is the simple way to explain intercultural communication. Okay. If we try to uh, implement this. Mm -hmm. Would we say that a channel like Now TV International represents intercultural communi communication or not? Or if we talk about the media uh, uh, as a method for intercultural communication, how would it be? Okay, intercultural communication at the very beginning was thought only for diplomats because mm -hmm. they were the uh, personnel or the group, their job need to travel and to, and to interact mm -hmm. on intercommunicate. But mm -hmm. now, you can travel sitting at home with mm -hmm. two clicks, tick, tick. Mm. on your laptop and you are there so media and social media mm. are the main nowadays the main ways to deliver the inter the intercommunication uh, uh, the cultural intercommunication oh. okay now all through your life you have lived uh, the concept give us um, some insight on your vision of the importance of intercultural communication and how did you practice it uh, and how can we make better use of it today since we are living in a world um, that is, as you mentioned, we are uh, practicing communication all the time, whether mm -hmm. we know it or not, mm -hmm. through the media or through social media or even uh, in, in ordinary life. Yes, we are practicing communication, mm -hmm. but do we practice in the right way or the wrong way? Mm -hmm. Because we can communicate through our prejudgmental thinking. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, yes, and stereotyping mm. and intolerance. Mm. And this is not the right way to deliver our message or to achieve our goals. Mm. So we are communicating, intercultural communicating, but how? Mm. Um, well, uh, through my life, because uh, I was born in Russia, I was born in Russia, um, I went to nearly 12 schools in six countries. 
um, more than six countries, I think, uh, Sudan, Saudi Arabia, uh, Kuwait, Belgium, Germany. So from the very beginning, I was encountered with this intercultural misunderstandings and communication. Mm. Um, in my life, I've got the, the impression all the time, why do the people judge other, uh, each other? Mm. What do we gain from this? So by, the, by the, uh, the experience and the incidents of life, I got to this point of intercultural communi communication through my work with the migration ministry in Germany. Mm. My, my main um, job was to integrate the refugees to the, into the uh, new, uh, new society. And how was the experience for you? Uh, the experience. The refugees who go to Germany come from different parts of the world. Yes, yes. From Turkey, from Syria, from yes. uh, Africa. From Africa, from Iraq, mm. uh, from um, um, East Europe. So yes. from, from different cultures, from different communities. And it was great because I was trained. Mm. If I worked only as a translator, for example, I got only one tool in my hand, mm. only the language. Yes. I wouldn't have achieved anything. Mm. I got this belief now, I know it now, because I, um, I, see th I saw the experience and I saw the situation from the inside. Mm -hmm. when, when we start, when you, you s let's, let's make it like this. Uh, I worked as intercultural mediator, mm -hmm. not as a translator, because in Germany they have discovered the importance of the intercultural mediator, not only a translator. Mm -hmm. So I, was, I have to sit in the middle, between two cultures and two communities. And I have not only to translate, but to explain what the because cultural backgrounds. Because there are certain things that exist in one culture and, and yes. do not exist in the I other I culture. I can give you a simple, a, a very, very, very I simple. I can give you yeah, examples too. Let's example, share yes. examples. Um, uh, I, was, I was in my office and we got a call from a school in, in, in the city and there was a, 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 some some kind of struggle and fight and it was a, a, a real bad situation and the director called us and i went there and i found one family the family refugees family from syria and the director they were fighting together and there were there was only uh, also a translator mm. the family wanted their son to get into this school they didn't know nothing about the preschool preparations mm. in germany Mm. And the translator was, was there, and she has translated one word, one word, mm. wrong. It's, it wasn't wrong, actually. Culturally, it was wrong. Mm. The father said, my son must go to this school. Mm. And the translator, she translated in, in, in German, in Deutsch, must. Mm. Must, in the, the German language, in Deutsch language, it has something to do with suppression with violence okay mm. so it's very it's, it's a very aggressive very, word. very aggressive, aggressive word. and mm. it's it it put the other the other side in a situation like intimidated why? yes why mm. why must mm. no I, I and there's a, a very a famous proverb in in germany i must nothing mm. so must in, in in the deutsch language in german it's, n it's not the same must as in English. Mm. Must is must. Well, so yes, yeah. this, oh. and they started a, a big fight because of small because word. Of word. Because I work in the translation field, I come across uh, mm -hmm. certain things like that. Yes. And I, I believe that it sometimes turns, uh, as you mentioned, aggressive, but it also turns uh, hilarious uh, yes. in other situations <laughs> where you get to laugh because certain words that are used in the culture would actually mean different thing in, in, yes. in, 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 in and sometimes it does not even exist in the other culture mm -hmm. for example if if uh, if you find a situation where there is a wedding and uh, the the uh, the attendees uh, are celebrating the wedding they they do what we call the or, mm -hmm. or the uh, the noise <laughs> the this uh, vocal noise that women uh, produce in order to express happiness in certain occasions mm -hmm. such as wedding or birth it's, for a foreigner, if you if you would like to to, to explain <laughs> this, to, it's it's not the work of a, of a translator. It's mm -hmm. here you are also explaining to him the culture that this is uh, connected to uh, the joyous and happy situations in our mm -hmm. culture, and it is only uh, in in our culture. So actually, 
this is the work of a translator, but a translator with an intercultural skills. And that's very and important. And it makes a difference, big difference. Uh, without intercultural skills, when you are when you work in a, in a multicultural uh, workplace, it's like being in France without the ability to speak French. I can't speak French, and I'm French. What can I do? Mm. Even if I can do something, it's very limited. Mm. So working in a multi multicultural company or intercultural company or, uh, or like Nile TV or delivering your message to a um, multicultural uh, audience, it's like being there and can speak the language. Mm. Intercultural communication is the language for the international society. Yes. Um, Dr. Iman, I believe also that there are good uh, environments for intercultural communication and that there are certain environments that would shut down or shy away from this type of mm -hmm. communication. Because you mentioned to me that you have been around the world and you travel to certain countries. Mm -hmm. You mentioned, for example, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, and Kuwait. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you mentioned um, Belgium, Belgium and, and Germany. Germany. So I believe all these countries are different in uh, sustaining mm -hmm. or nourishing intercultural communication. Am I correct? Uh, yes, mm -hmm. somehow. Um, now we are speaking about the cross-cultural communication. There is a difference between intercultural communication and cross-cultural communication. Cross-cultural communication. I would like to know the difference. <laughs> cross-cultural <laughs> communication the is um, um, the research we are doing to know the uh, to 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 see the characteristics of each community and compare it to the other community. Mm. What's the differences? What's the, the, the point to, to get together? So the characteristics, they are there for, and we make a comparison. And we have to be very, very, very professional and aware not to fall into stereotyping. Because in stereotyping, we are seeing in Egypt, all the people are like this. Yes. In Belgium, they are all like this. But no, 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 there's no happens. all. Mm. There's no. There's a tendency to, high tendency to, or low mm. tendency to. Okay. Uh, the uh, Eastern societies in Egypt, in Sudan, or our um, North Africa, uh, we are under the, the, uh, the character of collectivist um, value. We are thinking collectively. Mm. So we are deciding collectively. Mm. We have to belong to a group. Okay. So the group must decide. And this is makes the uh, this uh, obstacles mm. to change, to be flexible, to exactly. gain the new ideas. Yes. But in Belgium, in Germany, in the West uh, societies, they are uh, uh, they are they have higher tendency to individualism. Hmm. The individual decide for himself. Hmm. So they have more. Um, but they have this tendency to welcome or accept because other everyone cultures. thinks for himself. Exactly. For himself. Because like a country like Canada, for example, where you, you get to find people from around the world are there, they communicate very easily, although they come from different backgrounds, mm -hmm. different religions, different uh, social class, whatever. But they have this tendency to communicate easier because yes. they, they, they welcome the fact that this other person is different than mm -hmm. me. Uh, intercultural communication is something to be learned. It's mm -hmm. like training in a gym. Yeah. You, when, you, you, when you get your training in a gym, you're not going to get out of the gym and you lose your fitness there. Yes. You'll get out and this is your lifestyle, to mm -hmm. be fit. Mm -hmm. And this is the same for intercultural communication. You learn it and you use it for your lifestyle, mm -hmm. in your family, in your house, in your street, in your work, everywhere. But certainly it's a very interesting <laughs> issue. I enjoyed very much talking to you about intercultural communication. I hope that we get another chance to thank discuss you. it further. But unfortunately, our time is up. So thank I'd you. like to thank you very much, Dr. Iman Saad, an expert, lecturer, and practitioner of intercultural communication. Thank you very much, Dr. Iman. Thank and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us in this edition uh, of Cairo Local Time. I'm Helen Hamalewi signing off.